Hello everyone and welcome to the part one of our four-part series um, Design to Manufacture. So um, like I mentioned this is a four-part series. We are going to show you how to design a spark plug bottle opener like you see here. Uh, I'm going to go through the steps on how you would design it and then I'm going to uh, send it to my buddy Angelo and he's actually going to show you uh, this Thursday um, on our live stream how to um, put it into the manufacturer workspace and add toolpaths to it. Then on part three we're going to show how you can do some collaboration like you might need to make some late design changes and so we're going to show a little bit about that and then part four which I'm really excited about we're actually going to make this and the reason we're doing this is because we do read all of your comments that you guys post on our uh, live streams and we've seen a couple in there saying um, you show how to make something or design something but it'd be cool to see it go all the way to manufacture so that is why we are doing this live stream series for you so please make sure that you uh, subscribe uh, make sure that you watch all four parts of these series and we have a fun little uh, surprise for you uh, Aaron, who's actually um, helping me today with this live stream answering the questions, he's going to randomly pick somebody um, and they're actually going to uh, earn or get one of these uh, bottle openers after we make them at Pier 9 in San Francisco. So definitely make sure you leave uh, comments in the comments field. Um, you know, what you think about Fusion, uh, what, what's your favorite part about it, all that kind of stuff. We love getting feedback from you, so make sure you do that on all four of these live streams. And uh, let's dive right in. Okay, so like I mentioned, we're going to learn how to create this spark plug bottle opener. And I'm going to give a shout out to Angelo. He actually came up with this design. So it's based off of an actual real spark plug all of the measurements are correct, etc. Um, but then he added this uh, bottle opener part at the end. So it makes it kind of a, a fun little project. So I went ahead and created a drawing of this, which you see on the screen now. And I've included a link to this drawing in the uh, description of this live stream. So you all have access to this. So hopefully there's no missing dimensions or anything like that. But I am going to reference this drawing as we're going through. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a new project. So I'm going to click on this new project button and let's just call this a uh, fusion bottle opener. And it's going to create a new project um, that I can now save my data into. So uh, I'll go ahead and go inside of here and you can see that right now there's nothing in here and it's broken into two sections data and people and when I start saving stuff it's going to show up here but if I click on this people tab you can see that um, right now I'm the only person in here well Aaron is our project lead for this so I'm going to go ahead and add um, him into here and invite him into this project and what that means is he'll have access to the data that's inside of this project so he can view uh, any of the drawings any of the models he can make uh, comments on it etc and then later on today in this live stream um, i'm actually going to send an invitation or a link to angelo once i've finished the 3d model so i've created a new project I have invited the, uh, the person I want to into my project and this is great if you have like an engineering team where you have multiple people working on the project. Okay, So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new design and I'm actually going to save uh, into this project and let's just call it bottle opener. And you might say well why are you saving it right now? Well, by pushing it into this project, my autosave has now kicked in. And so anything I'm doing, it's going to get automatically saved uh, per the, the time I have set in my preferences. 
so I don't run the risk of losing too much stuff. So that's a little tip that I sometimes do is I'll just um, save it right before I even start. That way I'm getting my autosave happening. Okay, so looking at this uh, drawing, you can see over on the left side, I basically have the, the side profile of this spark plug. And yes, there's lots of dimensions here, and I'm gonna show some tips and tricks about doing this as we're going through. But basically, because this is a symmetrical part, uh, or a cylindrical part, I should say, we're gonna draw half of it and revolve or turn it around. So I'm gonna start by drawing this profile. Okay, so I'll start by creating a sketch, and I'm gonna go ahead and just start on this front plane. Now, one of the things um, I like to do is make sure I'm in the correct units. And right now, this drawing is in inches. So I'm going to uh, make sure I'm in inch, which I am. And then I'm going to basically freehand the side profile. Instead of typing in a whole bunch of dimensions over and over again, I'm going to just basically freehand it. Well, I know that the overall length, according to my drawing, is 3.287 okay so I'm just gonna draw a line that's straight up 3.287 okay then I'll start down here at the bottom and I'm just gonna go ahead and type in just a couple of these and you'll see why here in just a moment so I'm typing in 0.236 I'm gonna go ahead and zoom up here a little bit and then I might do one more and this one's 0.5 Okay, now the reason I'm doing this is I kind of want to get a basic idea of what the overall size is, because now I'm going to just freehand the rest. So check this out. I'm just going to kind of click over. I'll come up a little bit. And again, I'm just kind of um, following the drawing to kind of get the basic shape of what this looks like. So I'll come up. And um, I want to make sure I don't hit that little green checkbox. So I'm just going to kind of come to the side of it. And I'm just going to kind of fly through here real quick. Let me just do maybe something like this. Come up. Come over a little bit. Come up. Come over a little bit more. And as I zoom out, I can kind of see I'm sort of near the top, which is about where I want to be. So this is actually going pretty good. So I'll go something like this. I'll come over, I'm gonna have to zoom up just a little bit. And again, you'll notice I'm not typing in any dimensions or anything like that at this moment. I'm just basically getting the overall, sort of the shape that I want. Um, and again, I'm just using my drawing kind of as a reference here. Now you'll notice it's creating these constraints for me automatically, these perpendicular constraints which is good because I want straight horizontal and vertical lines, but they're kind of in the way. So here's a neat little trick. I'm gonna come over here and turn off show constraints and you'll see that that really kind of simplifies what my sketch is gonna look like. And now I can come in and start dimensioning the rest of this. So I'll hit D for dimension and I'm just gonna go ahead and click on some of these heights. So for example, this is supposed to be 0.635. Now watch what happens when I do this. And this is exactly why I said, kind of start to create your basic shape and kind of get some dimensions on there. Um, you'll notice that when this went above it, it kind of makes this a little bit confusing, okay? Well, all I have to do is just grab that line and bring it up a little bit. So if your sketch kind of overlaps or whatever, you can drag that up. Or I could even do something like this where I drag a window and move all of them at the same time. So you can kind of see how I'm able to update my sketch pretty easily instead of having things um, overlap. And you might see this happen um, as I continue on, but you don't want to get confused, right? So kind of do it step by step. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue uh, dimensioning here. So um, again, I just have to type these guys in. Um, let me put my glasses on so I can read these. Uh, 0.09, and when I hit enter, you're gonna see that my sketch updates. 
So I'm just working my way up the drawing. So I'm going to say 0.188. Um, this one's 0.125. Uh, um, and again, I'm just pulling this off of the drawing. Uh, this is a quarter inch, 0.25. And you can see that this actually goes pretty quick. Instead of me having to type in multiple dimensions while I was sketching, like the horizontal and the length and all that kind of stuff, I'm able to just um, come in and say all of my heights. So you can kind of see how that updated just a little tiny bit. Let's zoom up here. Um, this height here is supposed to be uh, 0.1. And you can see, again, another example there where my sketch changed a little bit. So I might want to um, move these guys uh, over, okay? Um, or I could just um, bring this point over like so. So I have a bunch of different methods there, but I kind of want to keep my overall profile. I think it just simplifies things. So let's go ahead and kind of finish this up, 0.14. Um, and so that one kind of made my sketch disappear a little bit. So I'm going to undo. And um, let me go ahead and just uh, get rid of that dimension. And let's just bring these up a little bit, like so. OK, and now I can throw my dimension on here and say 0.14. And then finally, I have uh, this 0 0.064, 0 0.064, okay. Um, so, and then I'm gonna do one more across the top here. And this one I know is supposed to be 0 0.093. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I've done all my heights. Now I'm doing all of my widths. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick my center line and that other line and just kind of work my way back down. So that's 0.105. Um, this guy here is supposed to be uh, 0.125. And we can kind of see how some of this stuff is updating. Um, let me go ahead and do this dimension here. Um, that's 0.2. And we can kind of see how that's all updating. Um, there's a dimension here that's supposed to be uh, point, oops, 0.03. And we can see my sketch is now starting to turn black, which means that it's being fully constrained by these dimensions. You'll see some here that are blue because we haven't constrained those yet. But if I come in here and add a dimension, um, that one's supposed to be 0.3. You can see how these are now updating and saying that they're fully constrained. So 0.344, 305, just a couple more here and then we'll be totally done with our profile. Now, you've heard me say in the past, keep your uh, profiles simple. Um, and this is taking a little bit of time, but we're actually making a really um, descriptive sketch here. So let's go 0.236. And this guy here, I think is our last one, um, 0.272. Okay. So we can see that our sketch is totally black and fully constrained. However, I don't see it shaded in, saying that it's a valid profile. And so I need to figure out what's going on there. So I zoom up here, we can see that we actually haven't finished the sketch yet. And there's a curved section right here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add in that curved section. Okay, so I'm going to use the uh, three-point arc. I'll just click on that start point, that end point, and then I'm just going to kind of click out here in space like so, and notice what happened. Because we closed this profile, it's now kind of shaded in with that sort of that tan color, saying that it's a valid profile. I have a couple more dimensions on here, so let me just go ahead and put a dimension on here and the radius is uh, 0.276. And we can see that that is now black, which means it's fully constrained. We now have a valid sketch. And I've mentioned in some of my previous live streams, you wanna try and get a valid sketch, a fully constrained sketch as much as possible. That way, if you make a change, you don't get weird results. So we spent a little bit of time typing in the dimensions, but now we're actually ready to turn this into a 3D model. 
So I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch. And I'm going to say create. And instead of extrude like we typically do, I'm going to come in here and say revolve. It's asking for the profile. So I'm going to go ahead and select on the profile. And then it's asking for the axis. What do you want to revolve around? I'm going to go ahead and click that vertical line down the center. And you can see we get a nice 3D preview of what this is going to look like. Now, um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but th at the very bottom, you can see that it says um, new body. Well, you know what? I got to thinking, gosh, I probably should have created this as a component. And again, in some of my previous live streams, I talk about you should always try and create your objects as components, but I forgot to. But check out this cool little trick. I'm going to go ahead and say new component and say OK. And sure enough, it created a component for me. And I can go ahead and rename it. I'll just call this uh, plug. OK. However, my sketch is not part of this component. And I really wish it was. Well, all I have to do is just drag this down on top of my plug component. And you can see that it put that sketch down there for me automatically. And notice how smart Fusion is. Even though I created the sketch first, when I did that, it actually said, oh, you have to have the component created first, and then you can do the sketch. So it actually fixed my problem for me. So I think that's really cool. And again, I really like having components. Um, it keeps your timeline simpler. Now, in this case, I only have one part. But still, I'm just going to go ahead and activate that component and keep everything kind of organized underneath. OK. So looking at the drawing, I'm going to kind of look at this and say, OK, what's the next kind of big thing I want to create? And we can see that there's these uh, little grooves right here at the top of our part. And you might ask, well, how come you didn't draw those as part of your profile? And I absolutely could have, but I'm going to show you some neat tips and tricks with this. Like I mentioned before, I like to keep my sketches simple and let Fusion do the hard work. So I'm going to go ahead and create one of these circles here and cut it into our part. And then we're going to use a pattern to add the rest of these. OK, so I'll go ahead and say create a sketch. Let's just do it on our front view here. I'm going to kind of zoom up so we can kind of see what's going on. C for circle, or I can hit the uh, circle command here. And I'm just going to hover over this point, And you can see it creates what's called a snap guide. So I can just hover over that point and come down a little bit. You can see how it's basically sticking to the side of our part here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click. And um, our circle is 0 0.06 in diameter. So I'm going to type in 0 0.06. And then I want to make sure it's in the correct location. So I'm going to throw a dimension according to the drawing. This is supposed to be, and I was pretty close, um, it's supposed to be 0.15 from the top. So there you go. Okay. So I drew the size I want. It's right on the edge. I'll do 0.15. And we're going to use the exact same command. We're going to say revolve. We'll click on our profile. What's the axis? Well, I can come in here and actually just click on a cylindrical face like so. And you'll notice it gives me a red result. And that is because of this operation right here. We're saying we want to cut that profile away. If I said join, it would actually create almost like a, a, a ridge or like, you know, a, a bump or something like that. But in this case, we want to cut that away. Okay, so I'm going to say OK, and we've just created our very first groove. Now I want to create five of these total. So again, instead of creating a complex sketch, I could come in here and say, let's create a rectangular pattern. Now I know that seems kind of weird, um, but we want to make it go in one direction. 
okay? So along a line, basically. So I'm gonna say rectangular pattern. And here's the cool thing. You'll notice that under pattern type, we have faces, bodies, features, and components. Now I could select faces and then click on that face. But what if there was a bunch of different faces, maybe three, four, 10, 12? I wouldn't wanna to have to select all of those, okay? So instead, I'm gonna change this to features. And I'll select the revolve feature in the timeline. And that is gonna select anything that has to do with the revolve feature. So I use this one, I would say 95% of the time. Okay, the uh, direction, I'm gonna specify in this kind of this vertical direction. So I'm clicking on this vertical axis right here we see on our origin. And now I get these little arrows. And I can specify the direction. We can see that we are now patterning that revolve feature down in that direction. I said I wanted five of these, so I'm gonna click on five, and now we can see that there's five of these rings. And then I also want to specify um, either extent or spacing. And by default, it's usually set to extent, but in this case, I'm gonna say spacing, and I want them to be spaced 0.1 inch apart, according to the drawing. I'll say okay, and now we have all of those grooves. Now I know that seems to take a long time because I was doing a lot of talking, but literally you just select it, tell how many you want, and it creates the pattern for you. Now check this out. This is probably my favorite part. Okay, according to the drawing, there are little tiny fillets or blends on each of these little ridges. So there's quite a few edges I have to select and put a 0 0.02 radius on those. Well, check this out. Instead, I'm gonna come in here and say fill it and come down to my features here and notice what happens when I'm hovering over these. So I'm gonna click on this first one and now it's asking for a size. So I'm gonna say 0 0.02 and look what it did. It actually picked the edges that had to do with that particular feature. So instead of me having to manually hover over and click those edges, I was able to just click that feature. In fact, let's add in the pattern feature and boom, instantly it filleted all of the edges for me. So I could have done edges or I can do features. And so literally in about two mouse clicks, I was able to blend all of those in one fell swoop. Hopefully you think that's as cool as I do. I think it's pretty neat, honestly. Um, okay, now basically, like I said, I'm kind of working my way down um, with kind of the major stuff. I noticed there's some, uh, there's a fillet, some chamfers, there's this hex nut shape. So I'm gonna kind of just keep working my way through this model. So I know there's a fillet here, so one of the tips I really like to use is the pre-select and then the right mouse click. So what does that mean? Well, I click on this edge to pre-select it and then I right mouse click and it shows me the commands that make sense. So instead of having to always go into a menu or anything like that, I can actually just click on something. So for example, a face, I right mouse click and there are the commands that make sense. Okay, so this is really fast for like fillets and chamfers. I just click on the edge, I say fill it, and that's supposed to be 0 0.04. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on this edge and say chamfer, and that's supposed to be uh, 0 0.02. Now, according to the drawing, there's a couple other edges that are also 0 0.02. And I kind of like to group things together. So I'm gonna do all three of these edges kind of at the same time. And that just simplifies my timeline. So I only have basically one chamfer feature in here. I could have done all three of these as 
three separate chamfers, and that's totally fine. But I kind of like to group things together. If they're the same size, let's just do them all at once. Okay. So again, not saying that's how you have to do it. That's just, I find it easier that way. Oops. Um, and then there's a couple other chamfers that are a different size. So let me go ahead and again, pre-select, right mouse click. I'll say uh, 0 0.03 and I'll select both of those edges for my 0 0.03 chamfer. So notice you know how complex our side profile is here. I, I could have drawn these chamfers as part of my profile before I revolved it, but man, that would have taken some extra time, a lot more dimensions. I would much rather do it in 3D than have to do it in 2D. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is to create kind of this uh, hex nut pattern on our part. Okay, and we can see according to this section view that's about 0.628 across. So again, I'm going to show a, a kind of a cool little trick here. Um, let's go ahead and pick on the face that I want to put this on. So it's actually going to be on this face right here. So I'm going to click on that face to pre-select it, right mouse click, and it shows me the commands that we can do with that face. And I'm going to go ahead and say, let's create a sketch on that face. In our sketch menu, we actually have a cool command under polygon called circumscribed polygon or inscribed polygon. Well, I'm going to do this circumscribed polygon. I'll click our center point and you can see what happens when I kind of bring this out. It's actually creating a six-sided polygon that is touching the outside of that circle. And you can see the number six right here. So if I change that to a three, it's gonna turn into a triangle, right? So we wanna go ahead and put that back to six. And I'm just gonna kinda get over here somewhere. I don't care about the size or anything like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and click. Now I want this edge to be vertical, so we'll go ahead and add a horizontal vertical constraint. I'll click on that guy and we can see how it became vertical. Now I also want this edge to be tangent with our part. So I'm going to come in here and say tangent. I'll click on that edge there. And I'm going to zoom up here a little bit. I'm going to click on this edge right here. You can kind of see it highlight blue when I click on it. And we can see how that polygon is now tangent to that circle and it's also vertical because we forced it to be a vertical constraint. And if I were to throw a dimension on here really quick, you know, we could confirm that that is the uh, correct size, the 0.628, and it says it's going to over constrain and that's because it's already fully constrained. So I could say OK to create a driven dimension, but sure enough, we can see that that's the 0.628. So I'm going to undo back because I don't need that. OK, so if we take a look at this, we've created this hexagon profile, but I want to machine away kind of where these flats are. Well, I could potentially d use the uh, intersect command, but that would probably would destroy a lot more of my model. So I need to add another profile here. So I'm going to just create another circle that just kind of goes larger than this polygon. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to create a profile like this. It's almost like an external profile. And now we can see it's going to keep everything inside the hexagon. And if I say extrude, it's going to machine away and create these flats for me. So there might be some situations where you need to add an extra profile around, for example, the outside to get you know, the reverse of what you, um, what you have with just a single profile. Now here's another tip. You've seen me use this before. How far do I need to go? Well, all I have to do is click on this face right here and it's going to snap to that face. Okay. I'll say okay and we very quickly 
where I was able to create this hex shape part. Okay. Looking at the uh, chat really quick, I see some cool comments, uh, cool tips, all that kind of stuff. I, like I said, I love doing these live streams mainly to share um, the knowledge that uh, we at Autodesk have and also what we've learned from you guys and gals. Um, some of the stuff that I'm showing you, we've actually picked up from, uh, from other people and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely if you have a cool tip or trick, absolutely share it in our live streams. We love learning from you guys. Okay, so moving forward here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of add a couple more details. So there's a really tiny fillet on the top here. I think it's 0 .008 according to the drawing. And I tend to try and do my like type commands um, in my timeline. So you'll see like, for example, right here, I've got my fillets and chamfers kind of grouped together. I try and do those as much as I can, okay? Now let's just jump back to the drawing really quick. We've, we've been kind of working our way down. I'm gonna leave the threads kind of for last because they're pretty intense and kind of heavy. So now I wanna start working on the actual opener part. And there's a lot of information going on here. So let's just break this down into its simplest form. It's kind of a, a rounded shape. So I'm gonna start by adding um, this 0.2 radius on our 3D model. So I'm just gonna zoom up here, click on that edge, say fill it, and that's gonna be 0.2. And you can see how it rounded that whole bottom edge. Then the next thing I wanna do is maybe um, there's some, some chamfers going on here. I'll go ahead and add those chamfers. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this guy and say chamfer. Now, according to the drawing, um, this, you know, by default, it's usually set to equal distance. And let's go ahead and type in the 0 0.03. And we can see that that worked. But according to the drawing, it's a 0 0.03 at an angle of 60 degrees. So under chamfer type, I can come in here and say equal distance, which is going to make it basically a 45. Two distances or distance and an angle. So I'm gonna change it to distance and an angle, and now you can see it's 0 0.03 at 45 degrees. Well, let's change that to 60, and watch what happens to my chamfer. You can see how it slopes down at 60 degrees. So it goes in 0 0.03, and it slopes down 60 degrees. I'll go ahead and click on this edge here, and say chamfer. And this one is 0 0.05, but notice what happens. It's, I type in my distance and I get an error. And it says the fillet cannot be created at the, at the requested size. And again, that's because of this angle right here. Well, it's 0 0.05 at the angle of 30 degrees, and we can see how now that that chamfer works correctly. So a couple options in some of these menus. So check those out, I'll say okay. Now I've got quite a bit done. I should probably save. Now because I already saved, you can see it's at version one. All I have to do is click save. I could type in a description if I wanted to. I could say, you know, started major design or something like that. Um, and it's going to go ahead and save that as version two. So you can see now, it says version two. I recommend saving fairly often. Okay, so the next thing I wanna start doing is working on the, um, the kind of the notch part of this, the can opener part of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a sketch. And using the drawing, I'm gonna be basically creating this area right here. And we can see there's quite a few dimensions and stuff like that. Um, there might have been an easier way to dimension this, but this is what I came up with, so hopefully it makes sense. Um, but basically we're going to start with the kind of the major part, which is this uh, 0.3 circle. And then I want to create these angled edges. So I'll start by creating a circle. 
And I'm gonna purposely kind of create it off center. And again, I've mentioned this in previous um, live streams, I like to force Fusion um, to you know, use these constraints and I wanna make sure that they're correct. So for example, I wanna say, make that point and that point vertical with each other. And we can see that it physically moved over. And so to me, that's verification that that worked. So I could have drawn it pretty close to this line and hoped it was close. But again, I like to physically see it happen. Okay, I'll throw a dimension on here. I know that this is uh, 0.17 um, from this edge. So I'm gonna say 0.17 and that pushes it down where it needs to be. And I can see that that has turned black. So I know that that's uh, physically constrained. Now I wanna draw kind of the notch part so I want the, my lines to be tangent. So I'm gonna hover over this line, hold down my shift key, and watch what happens when I draw my line. You can kind of see how it's staying tangent to that circle. So I'm just gonna draw something like that. I'll come over here maybe a little bit, and then hold down my shift key again until I see the tangent icon kind of pop into place right there. We can kind of see that little circular with a line on it, that's my tangent icon. So I'll go ahead and click. And sure enough, we can see there's tangent and there's tangent, okay? So now I'll start throwing some dimensions in here. I know that the angle between these two lines needs to be eight degrees and watch what happens. It, it goes ahead and does that It moved my dimension. Let me bring this back down here a little bit it kept my lines tangent, but it made that eight degrees. And you can kind of see I can move this around, for example. Okay, I also know that it needs to be 20 degrees uh, from this vertical edge. Now, unfortunately, I don't have an actual edge right there. And I want to have one that I can reference. So we're gonna use the project command. So I'm gonna come over here to project. And I'm just gonna go ahead and project the whole body and watch what happens when I kind of hover over and click. You'll see that it will project all of these edges. In fact, if I turn off, um, let's just turn off the body, you can kind of see it projected that outside profile for me. Now I have something that I can dimension. For example, this line and that line I want that to be, instead of 18 degrees, I want it to be 20 degrees. And watch how the little notch kind of rotates a little bit, it still stays tangent, but I've now specified the exact angle of this notch. And that's kind of the important part here, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish my sketch because I'm pretty much done here. Now, here's an issue you're gonna run into. I wanna select that profile, and you'll notice that the faces are kind of in front of it. And so I'm not able to select that profile. Well, if I click and hold for about a second, you'll see it allows me to probe through. So there's the first thing it's hitting, and then there's the second thing, the profile. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna click and hold, grab that profile, and grab that profile. Okay, so all you have to do is click and hold. We'll say extrude, and I'll start to extrude. Now how far? Well, I wanna go symmetrically, and I want to cut through all of it. So I'm gonna say all, and I don't care how far it needs to go. It needs to go far enough to cut through all of it. We can actually see the preview that it's giving us. I'll say okay. And we now have the basic shape of our notch. Hopefully this is making sense for everybody. Okay, looking at the, uh, the drawing, if we look at it kind of from the side here, um, we can see that it's only gonna be 0.3 wide. So we're actually gonna have to remove some material over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. So let's take a look and 
come in here and let's just go ahead and create a sketch maybe on this uh, this left plane and I want to keep a 0.3 region so here's another little tip that I tend to use I really like this center rectangle command so even though I started the regular rectangle the two-point rectangle I'm gonna click on center rectangle I can click here and start to move and you can see that it's asking for a width well let's do the point three and it's now locked that into place so no matter how I move my cursor now you can see that we are locked at point three wide and then all I have to do is get kinda near this this top edge right here and you can see how it's gonna snap to that so I'm just gonna go ahead and click and we're guaranteed that this is point three wide well just like before we want to keep what's on the inside and remove what's on the outside so I'm actually going to add another profile here something like this just an extra profile and what that's going to do is basically keep what's on the inside and allow me to select these guys as what we want to remove so I'll say extrude I'll start to drag I'll go ahead and say symmetric I could say all but in this case I'm just going to show you you can drag whatever you want say OK and we've now cut that geometry away so we kept the point three and we just used some extra geometry on the side to remove that away so now we're starting to get the overall shape of this can opener or bottle opener I should say okay going back to the drawing here let's kind of take a look I want to continue on so there's some little notches here to remove and this basically helps it grab onto the bottle cap easier so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that next I need to basically remove a bunch of material here and create this particular angle so again using this drawing I can see that it's at 135 degrees it's uh, 0.25 from this edge right here so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that so I'll say create a sketch and I, I actually get this question a lot I'm gonna switch to video here I get this question a lot um, how many sketches should I do one complex sketch with all of my stuff on there or should I do a whole bunch of different sketches honestly it's really up to you I like to keep having you know multiple sketches that keeps them simpler if I had one sketch with all this geometry and all these dimensions it can get kind of confusing um, but I don't want to create a sketch for every single rectangle and every single circle so just kind of do what makes the most sense and you can kind of see how I'm breaking this down into smaller chunks so we're going to basically now create a sketch that is going to define the correct angle so let's just draw um, something kind of like this I'm just going to kind of come across come down a little bit um, I'm going to hover over this point so it creates a snap guide for me so you can kind of see how I get that dashed line that's telling me I'm perfectly lined up with it and then I'll go ahead and close my profile I want to add a dimension from this horizontal line to this angular line and it says it's 142 well I want it to be 135 and it's actually going to update my sketch for me so now I know I'm at the right angle um, I need to be a certain distance from here so I'm going to go ahead and click that line there and that line there and that was pretty close let's just type in 0.25 we can see how my sketch kind of lifted up a little bit but then there's a dimension that goes from right here to the edge of this opener and you'll notice that it's trying to dimension this whole line I really can't click that point if I were to kind of click there and click here you'll see it's gonna give me an angle and not a distance and the reason for that is there's actually not a point right there that it can catch to so again I'm gonna use the project command so I'll come in here and say project 
And let's go ahead, I'm gonna project the whole part again and say okay. And we can confirm, sure enough, that projected that profile for me. But again, if I were to try and dimension, it still doesn't have a point. And you can actually see there are points on my sketch here. Well, check this out. I can go under Create, and there's an option to create a point. So I'm gonna say Point, and we'll see that it's actually snapping to that intersection right there. And I, now I've created a point. If I were to try and dimension, it'll let me catch to that point now and I can catch to this point and place my horizontal dimension. And in this case, it's supposed to be 0.174. I was really close. <laughs> 0.174, and watch what happens to my sketch. You can kind of see how it moved a little bit. I'm gonna undo so you can see that. I'm gonna undo. So that's where it was, and that's where it went. And notice how it kept that point on that line. I think that's really slick. So it updated my sketch exactly how I wanted it to. And this is all I need. I need to be able to machine a section of this away. So I'm gonna say finish sketch. And now I'm gonna machine this away. And here's another tip for you. If I click on this to extrude it, notice it's leaving out some of my profile. And those profiles are buried. So I'm gonna have to click and select profile and click and select profile, right? Well, there's an easier way. So check this out. I'm going to start by right mouse clicking and saying extrude. Hey, I want to extrude. So I'm going to say extrude. And it's asking for the profile. I'm just going to draw a box around that and it selects all of my profile for me automatically. So I didn't have to probe through or anything. The only thing you have to remember there is to start the extrude command first and then select your profile. So pretty cool trick. I use that one quite often, especially if my profiles are kind of buried and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's just uh, again do this symmetrically. We're kind of machining that away. I could say distance or I could say all. And you can kind of see it's gonna remove what it needs to, like so. We are getting pretty close to actually being done with this. So um, now all I have to do is start um, doing some of the little tiny things. So again, according to the drawing, um, you're gonna see there's some, some chamfer, some 0 0.03 by 45, 0 0.08 by 30. There's some little tiny chamfers and stuff on here. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna kind of zoom up here, click on that edge and say chamfer. Now this one is the uh, 0.03 and I can actually select the other edge. I don't even have to rotate. I can grab that other edge at the same time and you can see sure enough it, it grabbed both of them. So 0 0.03 at 45. Now you'll notice it says distance and angle because that's the last one that I did. I could just say equal distance and it's going to be 0 0.03 at 45. Okay, then the same thing with this guy here. I'll go ahead and click on it, say chamfer. Now these are 0 0.08, so they're a little bit larger. I'll go ahead and select both of them at the same time. But these are at an angle, so I'm gonna change from equal to distance and angle. And according to the drawing, these are at an angle of 30. We can kind of see how it changed the slope of those to be 30 degrees. There's a really small fillet right here to kind of break this sharp edge. So I'll go ahead and say fillet. Um, and in this case, it's a uh, 0.02. And I'll select both of those edges at the same time. We can kind of see how that's gonna obviously allow it to catch onto the uh, bottle cap a little bit easier without these sharp edges. I'll say okay. And then lastly, there, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a very slight um, section right here that's been removed to help catch onto the bottle itself. 
you can kind of see a little scallop right here. Okay, and that is actually dimensioned in this view. Um, we can see that it's right here. Okay, so it's 0 0.06 from this face right here. It's kind of hard to highlight, but you can see here's the 0 0.06 dimension. So we need to machine just a little bit off right there. So how can we do that? Well, I couldn't use a chamfer because that's going to go all the way along that edge. So what I want to do is basically machine that away. A neat tip with this is I'm going to say offset plane. And we knew from the drawing that it was 0 0.06 from that face. So I'm going to select that face. And you can see that it's putting a piece of paper on that face. And then we're going to basically, I'll kind of keep it on the side view, we're going to go a certain distance. And in this case, it was 0 0.06. And if we look, that plane is kind of cutting through like so. You can kind of see how it's kind of slicing through right there. So we just created a plane that is 0 0.06 inches from that angled face. Then we can use the split body command. So I'm going to say split body. We'll split that body there. Oops, I kind of zoomed too fast. What is our splitting tool? Well, the splitting tool is going to be this face. Now watch what happens in my bodies folder when I say OK. We actually now have two separate bodies. You can kind of see how it used that plane to kind of slice through or split through our body. And I don't need this body two anymore, so I'm going to just right click on it and say remove. I want to remove it from my design. And we can see, sure enough, that we kind of sliced through there and got rid of it. Pretty, uh, pretty snazzy, I think. I use the split body quite a bit. Okay, um, all we have left is the thread. I'm going to go ahead and save again because I've made some changes. Um, I could add a description. I could say, you know, um, added bottle part or whatever. You know, I can. Say OK. And you're going to see this is going to go from version 2 to version 3. Now you might ask, well, why would you save often? Well, you might do something where you kind of go off on a tangent with your design. And you might say, you know what, even though I've got 10 versions, I want to go back to version 7 and maybe continue from there. Because versions 8, 9, and 10 were way crazy. So I like to kind of you know, as I've, after I've done a, a bunch of stuff, um, you know, where kind of major stuff, I'll go ahead and save. So I highly recommend doing that. Just kind of get that into your, uh, your process that, to save often. Okay, so now I'm going to add the threads. Now, ironically, um, even though this is an inch part and an inch hex head, it's actually a metric thread. So you'll notice I came in here and I said thread brings up my thread menu. It's asking for the face. I'm going to go ahead and click on this face and it recognizes it as an inch sized face. But I can come in here and say instead of ANSI unified, I want it to be ANSI metric. It recognizes it as a 14 and the designation according to the drawing is a um, metric 14 by 1.25. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. We can kind of see how the preview updated a little bit. Now in this case I'm actually going to say modeled. That way you can physically see how it's modeling these threads. So I was able to specify that it was metric, the size and the designation. I modeled. I'll go ahead and say OK. But as I'm kind of looking at this, these chamfers look kind of weird like I don't think this would actually thread in and that's because the uh, threads only went the length of the cylindrical face and we actually want basically the threads to happen before we did the chamfers but when did we do these chamfers <laughs> well let's click on one of them and it actually highlights in my timeline you see these three little dashes right here so that's showing me that that's that particular chamfer. If I click on this one, you can see that that's that particular chamfer. 
So I want the threads to happen before these chamfers. So check this out. I'm just going to click and drag my threads and drop it before the chamfers and watch what happens. It does the threads and then it does the chamfers. And this makes way more sense, like it'll actually thread into the part. So you can actually reorganize your timeline if necessary. And I think this is wonderful that even though I did the threads last, I was able to put them in the middle of my timeline. Okay, um, this is looking great. In fact, I want to make it look a little bit nicer before I send it to Angelo. So I'm going to go ahead and add some appearances to this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the A key for appearance. And this is going to bring up my appearance menu. And I want to make this out of metal. So let's just go and click on metal. And I don't know, let's do something fun here. Let's do maybe platinum. So I'm just going to drag platinum onto that part. And we can see how it kind of changed the shininess and the appearance of that. Well, up here, it's kind of a, a shiny uh, ceramic or a shiny kind of white paint or whatever. So I want to simulate that also. So let's just come in here and maybe do, let's just do paint, glossy, and let's just do a, a white enamel. Now, here's the issue. If I were to drag and drop this, it's going to color the whole thing white. And I don't want that. I only want a certain area to be white. So up here, you'll see it says faces. Okay. Well, now if I drag this, you'll see that it's going to do individual faces. But man, there's a lot of faces in here. That's going to take some time. So I want to select all of these faces before I drop that particular material. So here's the issue. I'm going to go ahead and just drag a crossing like so to select those faces. I'll come over here to drag my material and you'll notice that it's highlighting the whole thing again. And the reason for this is basically the priority. It's saying, hey, if you're going over the body, select the whole body. And I don't want that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a neat little trick. So I have my material, I'm gonna set this to faces. Then I'm gonna come under my select menu to my filters and sure enough you can see it's selecting everything bodies faces components etc well I only want it to select faces so I'm gonna turn that off say faces I'll draw that box just like I did before like so and now when I drag this over you can see that it's only selecting those faces and if I drop that on there it's going to highlight all of those with that shiny ceramic type paint. So that was under my select menu, selection filters. I said only select faces. Now I can turn that back to select all since I'm done with that. Maybe I'll add one more down here. And then finally, I want to put a decal on here. So I'm going to say decal on this face. Let's go ahead and put our uh, Fusion logo on there. Let's do maybe this guy here. Rotate him around. Position it where I want it to be. Let's say that's good. And I am now done with this really cool snazzy spark plug bottle opener designed inside of Fusion 360. So Obviously, I'm going to save. I'm, I'm going to call this uh, final. It's going to push it from version 3 to version 4. And I could maybe send uh, a comment. I could come in here and say, you know, um, Aaron, um, how does this look? I could have been taking notes this whole time, but I'll go ahead and post that in there. And that's going to get posted into uh, my project and because Aaron is the project team lead 
and he's invited to this project, he'll get notification of that and he could respond to that. Maybe he's out of the office or something, but when he comes back in, he could respond to that and I would see that comment. Now, the last thing I wanna do is send this to uh, Angelo for manufacturing. So what I can do here is I'll go ahead and expand, open my data panel and we can see the bottle opener. Now I'll go ahead and right mouse click and I don't want to invite Angelo to my whole project because maybe I have other things in here that I don't want him to see or be part of uh, where, where it's okay for Aaron to, but maybe not for Angelo, um, even though I trust Angelo. <laughs> Um, I want to just share this particular model with him. And so I'm going to right mouse click on it and say share public link. And this is really slick because what this does is it allows me to click this little checkbox and it's going to create a custom link that I can copy and send to him. Okay. And you'll see right here, allow item to be downloaded. So maybe he needs it as an IGES file or as an OBJ or whatever. He can actually specify which file format he needs it in. I could also turn that off if I wanted to. But I'm gonna go ahead and send this link to Angelo and then Thursday, you're gonna see him actually take this part and add the tool paths to it. So definitely make sure you sign up for uh, this Thursday, one o'clock mountain. Um, we're right at the top of the hour. Uh, I think it's pretty cool that we were able to design a whole thing in under an hour. Now, if you took me not talking about it, we could probably do this in 15 or 20 minutes. So again, the drawing is uh, attached to the description of this uh, live stream. So you have access to it. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down, leave your comments, and we hope to see you on a future live stream. Thank you.